Do you pee in the pool? No, no Europeans no. pee in the pool. <laughs> that's I'm leaving. That's European thing. What I do you say? Excuse me, know. I have to get out and pee. No, that's like a thing. I need to take your suit off and it takes like 10 minutes. What? Yeah, we have bathroom breaks, like, you know. <laughs> Welcome back to Social Kick. I'm Brian Lundquist, joined by Luke Paddington. And coming off of a tremendous performance at the World Championships, Kasia Wasik. What's going on, Kasia? Hi. Oh, all good. I'm back in Las Vegas. Uh, I spent some time in Poland with my family. Um, it was a nice week uh, celebrating uh, my biggest success in my career. But it's time to go back to training. Europeans are right mm -hmm. around the corner. So I don't have a lot of time to celebrate. How's your neck from that heavy metal around your neck? You must have been wearing it nonstop in Poland. And all oh, your yeah. family saying, can I see it? Can I see it? <laughs> it feels good. Yes. I wish I, I had the neck pain like that all the time. <laughs> uh, I, I don't mind it. So what were your expectations coming into Worlds? What, did you see yourself on the metal podium? Were you going for the win? And what's, uh, how, how did you perform relative to your time goals too? Uh, I would lie if I would say I wasn't... Um, I wasn't going to, to Budapest uh, to win the medal. I was ready for it. I, I knew I have a shot. I, I, I'm right there. And uh, my whole preparation, I was thinking about medaling in Budapest. Um, that was my main goal. Uh, obviously, uh, I want to break my uh, best time, um, go under 24 17. Mm -hmm. I knew the pool, I knew the environment. So, um yeah i was just excited i was i was nervous obviously that comes with you know going so close to the competition but i had a big goals and i wasn't afraid to speak up <laughs> just describe describe the race because you you know you're on 24 one one best time in semis first qualifier so you're named for a pool you know so well from isl six weeks in isl there Sarah's next to you. You know you got you know you know your competitors super well. You raced them tons of times. Did you do anything different for the final? What? How did you execute your final? Talk about that. How did you get your hand to the wall? Yeah. So um, obviously in the prelims, uh, in the prelims I was just excited to race and get mm -hmm. my first race. You know, over with. Um, and 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 going to the semis. Uh, I was thinking if I should. You know. I knew I'm in a good shape and I could, I knew I have the speed advantage. So I was thinking if I should hold, you know, go into semifinals and swim a little bit off. Uh, mm. so just like, don't give the hundred percent from me. But I decided to go hundred percent, just, just treat that day as a final because it's just a 50. And at the end of the day, you you can't you know calculate and 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 uh, uh, wish to you know just mm -hmm. sneak in. It, it, it's just a fifty. So um, yeah, I, I decided to go full speed. I was excited to have my family in Budapest. I I saw them uh, when I was in the ready room, and they were they were on TV like you know <laughs> screaming, and they had just so much fun and I, and I, and I just knew I'm like, I'm going all for it. And, uh, yeah, like I went my best time, but that was just semifinal. So I was excited. I was really happy, but at the same time I shut the emotions off because I knew it's going to be really tough after placing first in semis to be like, you know, to cool myself down and, and don't get my emotions take control over me. I knew it, tomorrow it's the, the most important day and I have nothing in my hand yet. So, so I had to shut the emotion down, turn my phone off and, and do, do it again the next day. I've been looking forward to speaking to you since I saw you swim in 2019 ISL because I told you earlier, you're such a beautifully pure sprinter from how you swim. You, you swim taller than you are. You're elegant, you're long, you just, you're narrow. You're like, you just cut through that water. In, in your fifth day, what did you do well? And what did you wish that you could have mm, 
if only or anything i i wish you could tell, tell that to my coach ah. <laughs> Every, everyone is like wants me to swim longer than than a 50 and ever since no, I, I, you look you look like you swim longer like you're 510 but you look like you're 63 like you have a really long elegant swim which is nice you know yeah I, definitely my arms are long and i and i use them really well uh i i we practice the technique for for the 50 and i think it really suits me mm -hmm. the 100 technique is completely different and i can really connect the pieces so so i decided to focus on on the 50 and 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 take advantage of my stroke mm -hmm. uh, um and what i'm ah, there is a in my technique my technique is not perfect and that's that's what's fun about it because yeah, i yeah. know going my best time i can still improve yeah. this is not done i'm not done i'm not perfect so um i think my uh my race like my nah, my middle 25 i was really happy with uh maybe my first 15 that's that's where i can still improve a lot of things but um we 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 keep working on 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 the details on on every aspect of the 50 on the start break breakout uh mm -hmm. first 15 middle 25 the last 15 so so it's really a complex uh, mm -hmm. race what do you think um you where do you think your biggest area of opportunity is to improve in the 50 um yeah i think there's a lot of times people can like take uh dressel for example and like his start is so good that uh, he's pretty much maxed out like you're not going to see a lot of improvement there yet like we had somebody on the men's side like anthony irvin who was a really not a great starter but he won olympic gold in rio because he had really worked on his start and he probably did the best start of his career in that race even though he still broke out like in eighth place so there's still a lot of improvement there. I'm curious, you as a sprinter, like where do you see your strengths and where do you see like your biggest area of opportunity to get into the 23s? You know, it's funny, like as, as a younger swimmer, I never had a chance to look at myself underwater. Um, so I would see the videos um, of me swimming, you know, my races and, and or, or in practice and, and, and couldn't really, it, it would look pretty. But underneath, would, I would do a lot of mistakes that I would just wouldn't see. So recently, we started working with the underwater camera, and um, basically, these past few few years that I came back to swimming. Uh, and every time I see it, I see mistakes. <laughs> I see like my hands, you know, not going uh, in in the perfect. The perfect cat you know catch like i'm like catching the water and and every time i i find something that i can improve on so so that's exciting that excites me because every time i finish the race and i see the best time on, on the on the scoreboard i'm like wow you know that, that wasn't even perfect so uh um that motivates me to to go back to training and 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 it's definitely sometimes frustrating because you, you try to improve such a small detail of your stroke that it takes so much time. And it's just, uh, it, it's just it really frustrates me sometimes. I go back home and I'm like, I'm never going to get it. And then my coaches uh, here in the US or, or my family, my brother, he's also a coach. He always calls me and, and tells me like, you have to be patient. Like, you just one day you're gonna come in and and something's gonna click and it's gonna work, and it, it always does, but but you, you really have to believe in it and and keep working on that one small details and and believe that one day it's gonna work. I want to play a clip for you. So we had a guest on who won two Olympic gold medals in fifty three, and also silver, and he made a comment about. What's that's related to what you said? I'm gonna play this clip and I'm gonna ask you a follow up question, okay? So just check mm -hmm. out this 10 second clip. The mile guys, they all wish that they could be 50. Yes. Right? Because they think because they think it's easier, right? If it were easier, everybody would be doing it, you know. The mile. So so what what he's saying is that 
That's Gary Hall Jr. The 50th yeah, freezer, my, my racing idol. Swim, your idol. He <laughs> says the hardest race in swimming. Because it was easy, everyone can do it. And Gary got a silver in Atlanta, then gold and gold. And then um, somebody stepped in his cape at the trials in 20, 2008, and he didn't make the Olympic team. <laughs> but um, but Gary, as he got older, he got wiser or more experienced. And, and, and he's able to, and he said it's very complicated, very hard to do. Talk to that. Talk about... Has a 53 come around, come along in your life at the right point in your life, the maturity, your physique, where you are in life to be able to have, be ready for the 53. Oh, I mean, I always have arguments uh, about that topic with other swimmers because every swimmer thinks that sprinting it's easy and, but not everyone can be a sprinter. Right. So, um, it's it's funny. It's recently, I swam today. I, I I'm gonna give you a recent example of the set that um, was really challenging, but it wasn't challenging. For, it wasn't suiting me as a sprinter, and I just couldn't give my hundred percent in that set. And again, I was frustrated. You know, I I finished the set and I told my coach, I just couldn't give the hundred percent. Like, how am I supposed to get better if I can feel it that I just, I couldn't, you know? And and it was it was mostly aerobic set, you know, like maybe like based for, for the 100 freestyle. And now when I'm older, I realized everything in the 50, what you do, like you have to give 100%. Mm -hmm. It has to be full speed. It has to be race speed. And mm -hmm. it just can't be just swimming or, or surviving. Even though you know you're tired, your lactic lactic it's high, and and you feel like you know you accomplished something, but if you if you didn't give the hundred percent, it doesn't matter. It, it it does not matter. So that's what I learned, and I uh, I every day I try to remember that. And and if 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 I don't feel like I accomplished my goals, I I'm really frustrated because I know it's not gonna get me to where I want to be. You're being yeah. very honest. Um, and I think you have to be very honest with yourself to know, oh. did I did I really dig as deep as I've dug ever in my life? Mm -hmm. And no, you, that can't last more than 25 seconds, to be honest, you know, but mm -hmm. it, that's all about being really honest with yourself. And I'm hearing that from you. And that's wonderful, huh? my Brian. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of that <clears throat> maybe pushback from other swimmers who swim longer events. Uh, and a lot of that sometimes comes through during taper too. Cause like taper as a sprinter is a very different thing than what taper is for a lot of other people because there's bigger muscles involved. And, and so I think, uh, you know, that's, that's where some of the pushback can come from, but, um, I, yeah. feel like, I feel like also people don't understand that even the taper in sprinting, it's really challenging because you have to do it right. Yeah. So, so even right. though, yeah, like the workouts are shorter, they have to have the right amount of, of intense swimming and, right. and intense tempo, the right tempo. And it's just the, the, the small details that, that work. Right. So, uh, yeah, we, we always argue that the, the practices with the longer swimmers, uh, uh, you know, we as a swim, we as, as a sprinters don't do much, and and I'm I'm like, think what you think, but yeah, like, exactly, like, if it would be easy, you would be a sprinter too, right? Yeah, it, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> well, like there's a lot of mental focus, you know, and that and that's like that's that is tiring in itself to pay attention uh, that closely all the time. And I mean, I'm sure like you guys did this and back to your time training with Salo too, like the details matter and you spend a lot of time, uh, you know, making sure that every finish, every push off the wall, every flip turn is absolutely perfect. And, you know, that's, that, that is the focus of, of mm -hmm. sprint workout. So like the mental intensity is, uh, I think different than, you know, when you can maybe get lost in a, in a longer. 100%. But yeah. also, I mean, I'm not taking away anything from distance swimmers. I feel, I think they're amazing. Yeah. And I wouldn't be able to do what they do. Mm -hmm. I just don't have it in me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
I we always joke, you know, between each other, like, hey, like you don't do and much and you suck because you swim so so <laughs> much, you know. But we have respect. I think the yeah. respect is really important. If you understand the other person is giving their best, that's that's when uh it matters like the respect between the athletes is really important yeah well speaking of uh, respect and admiration I-, I wanted to get your reactions to some of the performances that we saw at worlds because you know it's a few world records and uh some just tremendous performances some people coming back uh from from injury or you know maybe maybe a layoff and um i like so what was your reaction to just the other performances at Worlds? What stood out to you? What was the most outstanding swim? Oh, made, made you feel good. Made you cry. Oof. Oh, there, was, there was a lot of amazing performances. And uh, it was so funny. Like every time, I mean, I, I arrived to Budapest pretty late because uh, the 50 was the last day. So... Mm-hmm. Some of the races I watch on TV. I mean, most of the races because I I feel mm-hmm. I think only one day um, there was only one day that I could actually go to the pool and watch uh, the meet um, mm-hmm. live. Other other than that, I, I had to watch it on TV. Mm-hmm. But they were really getting me excited, and I was just thinking, why I have to wait so long? Because the 50 is always at the end. Mm-hmm. I don't know who sets the schedule, but like, <laughs> come on. I mean, can it I be like in the middle? Uh, but uh, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit biased, but I have to mention the, the Polish performance. 50 backstroke. Yeah. 50 backstroke. I mean, the yeah. Xavier is only 17 and um, he crushed wow. it. You know, in the, hundred, uh, in the hundred, he shaved over a second. Wow. And in the 50, wow. I mean, obviously he he medaled and and watching him as a 17 years old uh, swimmer that that raced his first time at the World Champs at, at such a big event, he was dealing with that pressure really well with the emotions. Uh, I was really impressed, and uh, I didn't have that when I was 17. Definitely yeah. didn't have that. So watching him as a 17, being ready for the success, really gave me hope uh, for, for my country, but also excitement for his career. Let's talk a bit. So we are where we are now. It's a nice segue to in Poland. And let's go back to where you started. So Poland has had some some good success in swimming, but not a lot. I mean, uh, all four 200 fly gold medals. Amazing, mm-hmm. right? Um, beat Petra, I think. Uh, you have was this um, Waziak? You have yourself. I mean, um, now you have a backstroker. What's life? What was life like swimming in in Poland in 2012? And then you made that decision to go to NCAA's. Not many Europeans come to NCAA's. And then just in a quick summary, that decision of leaving Poland, you went to you know four years in LA. Then what happened? Then what happened? Then what happened? Where now? Just give us a quick summary for our viewers because they don't know your history. I think it's very interesting. So, yeah, I was training in Poland uh, until I was 20 years old. Um, oh. I made my first Olympic uh, team when I was 16 in okay. Beijing. Um, and, um, yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was a great experience. I love my high school coaches and, and, and I was really close with my family. Mm-hmm. And when I graduated from high school, um, that was a year, that was exactly one year before London Olympics. Mm-hmm. And I decided to to switch the coaches and train with my brother. Um, so so that was an awesome experience for both of us. My brother is a former Polish uh, champion in 50 freestyle. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Um, I made my second Olympic uh, nice. team with training under him. Um, and uh, during that day, we decided basically together that it would be great for me to to go to the States and, and um, 
get different training, meet meet other cultures, learn the language because I couldn't speak English when 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 I arrived in in uh, in the US. So it was just a huge oppor opportunity for me. And uh, I talked with a few colleges and, and they were really interested uh, in me. So, so yeah, like I decided to, to, um, to leave my, my home uh, city, which, which, which was really tough. I was really close with my family. And and the first year at USC was uh, crazy because <laughs> I, I I I had to meet my friends all over again. I had to start from zero, so so that was really tough. But I slowly uh, adjust, adjusted. I mean, I was I was lucky that I had uh, the whole team cheering for me and then helping me adjust mm -hmm. to 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 the situation um and yeah i had a great college uh, college experience i trained with under dave cielo uh, we had a great time together um he won ncaa my senior year um in 400 freestyle relay i got third in the 100 and after i graduated i pretty much i was i mean i made my third Olympic team in Rio. And after after that, I, I, I was in love with swimming. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't ready to, to um, end my career, to retire. Um, and I remember I had a, even meeting with Dave after, after Olympics and I told him I'm ready to train more. Uh, I love swimming and I, I want to try make my fourth Olympic team. And a few months after, I um, uh, injured my shoulder and I was forced to take time off. So that was that was the first thing that uh, kind of uh, put a hold on my swimming. Mm -hmm. In the middle of that, I um, I was planning a wedding that, you know, we were planning a wedding in Poland. Nice. <laughs> we moved to Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, like swimming wasn't my priority uh, at that moment. So you, you, you didn't have a Vegas wedding in Vegas. You had a traditional wedding in Vegas, right? Yeah, you didn't have, I had you didn't have the five minutes. <laughs> okay, great. I had to. I mean, <laughs> I had Polish. to have Vegas. Yeah, yeah we, we did the Vegas wedding and then we, we had a big one in, in Poland. Okay, good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, so go, go about you. So you started to like move away from swimming mentally, yeah? You started to like not forget yeah. about it. What was it? Yeah, I mean, it just so many things happened in my life that all of a sudden I cut, I, I found myself not swimming for a year. And, and I got a job in Vegas uh, as a clinical research assistant. Oh, cool. um, and, and I was working full time. So yeah. all of a sudden I'm, I'm, you know, in Las Vegas, uh, working and and not swimming. Twenty five years old, twenty six years old. Yeah, twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twenty five, twenty six, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So that was, and on top of that, I mean, Vegas wasn't an easy city to 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 swim. You know, there wasn't a pro team at that time, mm -hmm. so I didn't see many options. So yeah. kind of, you know, I, it's not like I was really trying to look for it, but I didn't see it. I had a job, I had life, you know, it was just, it just happened. So after, after a year and a half, I, I realized I'm like, wow, like, I'm done with swimming. You know, I, I think I was watching a Polish nationals or, or some international meet at, on TV and, and I just, couldn't believe that I'm done swimming. It just hit me one one day, you know, because because when I was working and 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 living my life, I didn't really focus on it. Um, but one day, it just just came to me, and I, and I I wasn't ready. I was I I had a feeling that I can't be in Tokyo. You know, I can make my fourth Olympic team, but I'm done swimming. I am, I, you know. 
I'm not doing anything about it. Were you exercising at all? Were you lifting, running, rowing? I was. I was really active. I was running uh, before my job. Uh, I would I would always wake up, you know, super early in the morning, go run or do gym or some fitness classes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I stay active. I wa it wasn't like a drastic transition from, mm -hmm. you know, being a pro professional athlete to, you know, <laughs> not doing anything. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I still love to move and it yeah. was keeping my mind happy. Yeah. Um, but but at the, at the same time, catching myself, not swimming and not having the environment of the team and not being a pro athlete was really making me depressed. Mm -hmm. I, was, I couldn't, you know, I was just missing it so much that I couldn't, you know, uh think i just couldn't think about that day that would come that we i would watch the olympics on tv and i would be like yeah i didn't even try to be there i oh i, I could be there but you know what i was doing some other stuff so um yeah but like i said i didn't i missed it but i didn't focus it on it so much to the point to the moment that my friend messaged me to sign up for the master meet in Las Vegas. Uh, and I just, I signed up, I was really excited to see my friends and, and race, I signed up for 53 and 50 fly, I think. And I didn't even think about racing. I was just like, ah, it's awesome. Yeah. I see my yeah. friends and, and, and have fun. And that you, you jumped straight back mm -hmm. into racing. You didn't. You didn't join a training group. This was no, like no. I mean, it was, for me, it was just like, yeah, I'm gonna see my friends, and you know, like I, I was <laughs> a professional athlete for so many years. I know how to swim. Like even though I wasn't in the water for so long, like I'm still gonna be fine. Yeah. So That's what I do every day, Brian. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> don't like <act> super <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah i mean i i put my racing suit on i felt that um i just felt that i felt good in the racing suit having my friends i met a few coaches and 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 i i just had so much fun and that was the moment that i met um my current coach uh ben lors from the UNLV um, and he told me, hey, like if you if you think about coming back to swimming, I'm opening the professional team starting from March after after the college season is uh, is over. Hmm. And that just some, that gave me like sparks oh. in my, you know, in my heart, like uh, I I was all about it. And the next mo Monday, I jumped straight to the master program that we had in Las Vegas um, because I knew I have only a month to get ready or two months to get ready to swim with the professional team. So I didn't want to be like, you know, not in shape and slow them, slow them down. I want to be ready and I want to prove my coaches that I'm not messing around, that I want to, I have a goals and I want to meet them. So um Wait, I had a, you, you got I, hired by the isl team when you weren't even swimming no that was okay. uh 2018 i got 18 okay my bad yeah. okay okay yeah okay. 18 and isl yeah 2019 yeah. Okay. yeah okay so at this point when you started swimming again the shoulder injury that's all healed you know yeah. you're okay after so a year and a half it was pretty good yeah, yeah. so uh like I, i'm interested in this because well, like we talked about before we started, Luke and I met through a master's group. And um, and so we've we've trained with several different master's swimming groups. I'm curious, what what was your master's group like? Was that you kind of focusing on just getting back into swimming in your own workouts? Or were you there kind of doing the program that was prescribed as part of the master's group? And like, why did you choose to swim with the master's group anyway and not just like go to the pool and do your own workouts until until you were ready um, to train with the program. So we had a awesome group in uh, master program in, in Las Vegas with coach Vic. 
uh, that that was just so passionate about swimming um and he was leading the group from basically he had people from 18 years old to 90 <laughs> or past it was <laughs> that's a good it, was, it was insane and the group was just so fun he would uh, he would lead you know he would have a program he would have the practices ready at 5 30 every morning and he would just be such a positive person 5 30 masters 5:30. that's not masters oh yeah 5 30 no. 5 no. to 5 30 no. to 7 people who have to work <laughs> oh, and you're you're still working full time still working time. yeah yeah so okay. like yeah like we would have morning practices you know end at seven and then go to work and uh do you know whatever we have to do later uh but the group was just so fun and and yeah like he he had great workouts i i knew i have to get back to shape i i wasn't like oh i'm, I'm a sprinter i can't do this and this and this like no i was to totally committed and just happy i have a coach okay because... well, i didn't know this about vic because masters coaches a lot of times really liberally use the word fast everything is fast <laughs> we're doing 2050s and they're all fast <laughs> but as a sprinter as we talked about we take fast very seriously yeah <laughs> I, I think, Vic had, I think Vic, Vic had negative split like that was his word <laughs> negative split. so we don't uh, do that we do one split <laughs> yeah exactly i was always laughing but he really got me to good shape that um i was i was ready no problem to join the pro team i had that really good base after after his workouts so i was just grateful like i said i was grateful to have a coach who he really believed in me i told him my goals and 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 he was right with me on it so um yeah, that was that was that was really lucky that we had that program and, and, and I could join. It was a lot of fun. I mean, so many swimmers. I, I met so many great swimmers in Vegas that I just can't believe, you know, I like master swimmers are the best. I, I could I could swim with master sw swimmers all the time because they're just so much fun. And and I can learn so much from from most of them, like they, they you know, you guys know, like, have just life, cool lives, you know, um, that, that go on after swimming, but they, they still show up every morning and, and give their best. You know what master swimmers did for me? First of all, I never wanted to be a master swimmer. So I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. And no way <laughs> I was a cottage swimmer. Right? I don't know never. why, but like, but I changed my mind. Swimmers are like this. Like, they think master swimming is just for like, yeah, the 90 year old. Know. Yeah. Anyway. But, but what master swimmers taught me as well is it taught me to to and i think i need to be more mature to be there it taught me you know master swimmers like if the set is 10 100 i am well if you don't feel like doing 100 i am and you think you're gonna do freestyle you adapt it you do freestyle that's what's better mm -hmm. for you so yeah. begin you're not slacking off you're still gonna give it your all out but you, you do you get to know what's good for you and what and you have that communication either of your coach or of yourself to start taking responsibility maturity about your own swimming and you're still pushing yourself you know when to back off or to add on i mean often like brian would stay on extra if he felt like he needed to do more or we might do 10 100s and brian does 10 50s all up from dive but stuff like that you, and, and, brian likes to do just, extra i see but he, he does extra because he's in the triathlon now he's crazy he's gone from being a world-class sprinter to a world-class triathlete i don't know what's wrong with him, but anyway um but master's got that mindset right which is what you need for 53 about that honesty and about, about being what's good for you Kazia, what's good for you brian you look it can't what works for me doesn't work for you in 53 right no that's that's totally true i i think now when you when you said that you really the master swimming gave me i mean yeah like because of the master swimming i i now i understand the value of listening to your own body hmm. when i was in college i mean i didn't know anything about my body mm -hmm. i was just like you, do it. you know basically doing whatever i was told i didn't know how to communicate my uh, my feelings with my coaches mm -hmm. and that's why right now i'm 30 years old and 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 i'm doing my best times 
yeah. yes because i just had to learn my body and and i'm lucky enough that i i I had a chance to do it for so long that that now I can I can hit my best times and and go faster and and still improve because I'm still learning. It's 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 amazing how um, how human body and hu human mind work and 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 to be able to learn uh, about my body at that age it's 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 amazing. Yeah, that's so much fun. And I think too, as, as you probably can attest, aging changes your body too. And you're not the same athlete that you were when you were in college now either. So every year is a bit of a learning experience. So the oh. more that you can channel like that mentality of listening to your body, the answer is not going to be the same <laughs> from one season to the next. So it's all the more important that you get better at listening to it. Um, I'm curious about well, just let's go into your training now. I mean, because it's a story like yours is is pretty rare, I think, in swimming. Um, to uh, we well, we've seen it a few times, but I'd say like it's it's relatively rare where you have an athlete who has like a long track record of success, um, some some really good success throughout the career, and then you, you like you figure it out, right? And it's like it's not that you didn't know anything before but you just want a silver medal at worlds and you, you're thinking about the top step of the podium now. And that's slightly different than where you were at other points in your career. And you also retired. So like, what is, what is your training like now? What are some of the things that you've learned about yourself now? Um, and maybe how is some of that different than what you may have been doing before you retired? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I have to, definitely mention my training and my men especially my mentality before because being in poland or or even going to college i mean i was i was swimming with the best co coach ever i mean dave dave is a great coach he has great workouts targeting sprinters mm -hmm. but i was i still i wasn't ready to to break out and be be at the level i am right now <laughs> And I'm only blaming myself for it um, because I know mentally I wasn't ready. I didn't know how to read my body. I didn't know how to communicate right with Dave about um, uh, my feelings, you know, how I feel mm -hmm. in the workouts. I, I was just kind of doing 50% uh, and 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 surviving and and hoping that this is gonna uh be good enough for the meet and then when i would go to the meet and i would be just afraid of everything afraid of the like, swimmers you know i i always felt like um you know the the girls that are making the finals like they're just like heroes you know like how can you go that fast i mean i went to the olympics and i placed 27th and i was just like wow i'm 27 <laughs> you know what i mean um so i just had to grow grow up and and understand that the you know it's it's uh i have to know my body i have to trust my body i have to communicate with, with my coach i have to trust my coach but also don't be afraid to speak up if i don't like something i'm gonna say it and i expect my coach to be completely honest with me and i'm also 100 percent honest with my coach so i feel like right now especially when i joined the ulv and, and i'm training under ben and and pat otta assistant coach we we do a great job of just being honest with each other and and speaking up if we don't like something you know like sometimes i don't understand stuff and i really like when when coaches explain me uh how um the training's gonna work um so so i just know i i believe in it 100 percent, and i know how it's gonna how my body's gonna react to it and sometimes if, if I feel like, no, this is not going to work, I'm, you know, I, I'm having honest conversation with my coaches and they understand, they treat me like an adult. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I guess I needed it, uh, you know, I, I, but I wasn't ready, you know. So mm -hmm. at the same time, I just had to wait. 
I, I truly believe I had to wait all these years. I had to retire from the sport, get the perspective how my life looks without sport, without swimming, and, and come back to it with, with completely different energy. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like that's the main reason why I, I, I swim faster right now. Um, it, it's my mentality. Right now, I, I just enjoy every moment. And when I go to the big meets, I'm, I'm so happy because training, it's just boring. It's like <laughs> no one likes training. Like it's all about competing, you know, right. it's like and and. And to be honest, I mean, without ISL, I don't think I could discover myself in the mm -hmm. way I, I, I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now. ISL gave, gave me a huge opportunity to, to get to know myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember when I joined in 2019 Cali Condors and I was surrounded by the best swimmers um in the u.s and in the world i mean like i just couldn't believe that i'm you know on cali condors with jason lee's like you know uh you know managing us and 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 it, it just it was so cool to to be on the team of the great athletes that they were supporting me they were cheering for me um and they were just normal people they were just normal, good people. And, and and I had to realize that like they're not superheroes. I mean they are, all of them, but but I can be the same, you know. And I, you I were you dominated like, that first season. I mean, they lifted you, eh? You weren't you weren't intimidated at all, were you? I mean, they lifted you and you I felt was, they definitely lifted me and yeah. the way they supported me, I was just so amazed and and, and I could feel like yeah, like I can, you know, we're all friends. They're just, they're yeah. just good people. I, I saw how they train. They, you know, we, we all train similar. It's just the approach you take before the race. Um, right now, like when I'm racing and like at the big meets, I mean, I'm just happy. You know, it's a, of course, there's a lot of, there's more pressure when you go to the, you know, the next meet and the next meet. But it's all about, you know, you never know when, this is gonna end. You never know if this is your last meal, especially at my age. Like, I mean, I wanna do it for a long time, but I don't know the plans that future okay. has for me. So that's why I'm just, you know, I put a smile on my face and then when I'm in call room, uh, I'm just happy. This is this is all that matters. Do you uh with respect to the injury that you had, um, is that something you have to look out for at all? Uh, or was that just kind of like a one-time thing you think, or are you, are you like kind of doing anything body maintenance wise to just do injury prevention in particular? Yeah. So the injury came back to me um, in, uh, yeah, that was right before Tokyo. It was a month before Tokyo. Oh. Whoa. So yeah, it was it was super stressful, um, and and uh, you know we were we were so close to the Olympics that I knew even if my shoulder is gonna fall off, I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna compete. Yeah. Um, but it was it was definitely something that we had to look for it and 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 cut a little bit of volume um, to 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 basically survive and and be ready for for Tokyo. Uh, after after Tokyo, um, I I went straight to ISL, um, and um, if if you notice, I mean, you probably didn't follow you know follow it that much, but I was expected to swim fly, you know, fifty fly, but I swam mm -hmm. only match one, and then I I wasn't able to do it. I. I I, I was really in pain and uh, there was no other solution but take time off and I wasn't willing to do it. So I was on a lot of painkillers at that time and I'm really thankful for, for the um, for the staff that was with Toronto Titans uh, because these people are, were amazing and did amazing job with my shoulder. Uh, so um, yeah, I had... 
a scary time but but after after words world champs in abu dhabi i was able to to take a decent uh, amount of time off uh and give the shoulder a little bit of rest well we know a really good physio so john who is with us it, on our group he's a physio specializes for elite swimming and he fixed my shoulder and if you can fix oh, really? this junk, you can fix anything <laughs> I, I, should, I should message here. You should. Where, you should come to the area. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to ask you a very cliche question that people ask, and it's cliche, but I think I'm going to get the answer I've been looking for. Um, it, it, you know, we ask what's the hardest event in swimming, and people think hard means climbing Mount Everest. They don't think hard is like passing an exam at MIT, right? And I, mm -hmm. I consider hard being that, where there's no room for error, no room for mistakes. So you got to work. We talked about this earlier. I remember having that relationship that you mentioned with your coach, with a, an elite athlete as well, who won a medal at Worlds in 53, um, George Bavel. I remember working with him. And I remember one practice for two hours. All we did was work on the amplitude of his kick, where his back was and how his back looked and his the angle of entry of both. It had to be perfect, like within degrees. We spent mm -hmm. two hours working. He didn't care how fast he went. That's mm -hmm. all we did. And another time I'm going to see Anthony Irvin train. And like, I was so disappointed because all Tony did was put his fins on and swim in, in the diving well, slowly, up and down perfectly. But they were like writing exams. Give us an example of a hard set that you have done recently that it was taxing. Oh, you know, the hardest sets I, I've done were with power towers. Oh. And... and Every time when my coach puts power towers on both sides of the pool, uh, I, I have tears because I know what's going to happen. That's that's the kind of sets that I really get. Um, they get me because usually like, you know, on power tower, you, you swim 25, you unclip really fast. They put it on interval. So it's not like you can rest. You have to do it as fast as possible. You clip to the second power tower and you swim back. And and usually it's on really tight interval and it's it's heavy. So um, I I can't exactly remember the set, but it was like four twenty fives with the power towers on thirty. I think it was on thirty seconds. Whoa. I don't know the weight I was carrying, but it was pretty heavy. And and after the fourth one, you had like thirty extra seconds or twenty extra seconds, and you would do fifty all out without anything. And we would go like four rounds of it. Whoa. And I remember the fourth round, I um, I just couldn't move forward. Like the power tower was like <laughs> dragging me back. And that's the, the worst pain for me because I don't know when it's going to end. I just, I try to swim to the wall, but I can't touch it. You know, it's just the worst pain and that's I think that's the only time I really had tears in my eyes and I was like I just this is like impossible but at the end of the day it was it was a great set uh, so so sets like that with with the power towers are really challenging I and mean you can apply that to skins because the 53 skins you did well and was it a similar kind of pain right oh yeah like we definitely you know the for the last season we, with more experience we knew we have to train more for skins because they're completely di different than just having one race and and being done done after i mean uh, world champs this year for me that was easy job because i just had 50 freestyle you know yeah. one race per day i mean prelims then after you know there was semifinals and the next day finals so yeah. i had plenty of time to recover i feel like the most the the the, the challenging part uh is it's just the mental preparation how you how you deal with the emotions because because really you know physically you're gonna be there no matter what you're gonna recover from that 150 freestyle <laughs> Yeah. But, but if if mentally you're gonna be able to recover for the next race. Hey, so you know, having done ISL, I know it's the the format has been different for the past few seasons, and the timing is a bit different. Uh, but but still, like you mentioned, there's a lot of racing, and you're talking about okay, how does that impact my training to be able to race and get ready for ISL? Um, 
first of all, do you think that there's going to be another season of ISL? And then also if knowing that this coming season is not going to happen or has been postponed, um, is there anything that you're planning to do in that kind of block that, that period of time for training to incorporate more racing in case that's been beneficial to your training? I really hope that ISL is going to come back. I mean, it's, it's just so great for, for, for our sport to have ISL. Uh, I, I love the whole concept. I love the meet. Um, I mean, I, I got to, I got a chance to meet so many athletes around the world and travel the world and, and feel like a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. Um, with, you know, right now when, when, when I sell, it's not, um, it's, it's, it's not on. It's like you have that one meet per, per, per year, basically. And it's, and it's really tough to, mm -hmm. to train for such a long period without any racing. So definitely, you know, in the winter, if, if the ISL is not going to come back and it looks like they might take longer uh, break than, than a year, I, I hope eventually it's going to come back. I, I really keep my fin fingers crossed for it. But, but, but with the situation right now in the world, we might have to um, wait a little bit longer. Um, but, but definitely I, 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 I will see a schedule maybe maybe a world cups i've never done world cups in my life so mm -hmm. uh that's something that i might look um in my training and 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 add in my my schedule but uh i don't know yet i haven't Master. even looked at the you got masters meets come on <laughs> Master's oh yeah, meets. no, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I might actually. I, I'm not kidding. I, Get that I, record. Come on, the yeah. world record. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. I, I I feel like I still hold two master records. Probably. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. 2018, I went to U.S. Nationals, uh, Master Nationals in Indy. Uh -huh. uh, that was 2018. Yeah, I was swam 53 and 100 and I broke two records. They're fun. My brother's off to Colombia next week for the Pan Am Games for Masters and he's representing his country and he wants to break the world record and he's a former Olympian. So he, I mean, that's driving him at age I just, 25. Exactly. Like, I mean, I think even when I'm going to be done swimming, you know, professionally, I'm still going to be swimming Masters. Totally. I, I truly believe that, you know, this is sport for life. I mean, this is a great sport that you can really do. And I, I saw it with my eyes. I mean, I, I was sharing locker room with with women that are n 90 years old. I was yeah. showering next to them and yeah. they gave me so much uh, like energy. I, I was just amazed by, by, by these women and, and, and it was amazing. And, and, you know, I was thinking, I want to be like them when I'm, at that age, I, I was just, this is so cool. This sport is so amazing that we can still do it even when we are older. You know, swimming is so good for human body. I remember uh, going to Masters Nationals a few years ago and the there were three women in the 80 to 85 age group who did the 200 butterfly. And I was like, I've never been more impressed. Yeah, um, but I want to ask you, so like, the rules and masters are for butterfly. If you swam in the era where uh, I don't know if it's like, if you just get it for that era, but the rules in butterfly used to be that you could do a breaststroke kick. So a masters meets you can swim butterfly and do a yep, breaststroke it's legal. Kick. So what is it, but is it for everyone or just the certain age group? No, everybody, everyone. Oh, everybody uh, yeah, yeah. That's so so, cool. because there were some people that swam when those yeah. were the rules. But you have to stick breaststroke only. You can't switch. You have to be only breaststroke. Yeah, like, yeah, like. What yeah. what what current technique do you think is going to be gone by the time that you're a 90 year old master swimmer? Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. Gone. Yeah, like track starts. It won't be track oh, starts anymore. I, I just I don't know. I feel like they eventually they're gonna switch breaststroke 
you know, to dolphin kicks because it's just, you know, it's so hard <laughs> yeah. to see. And, yeah. and and it's just so, I think, frustrating for everyone. So, so I feel like eventually we're going to see that, like, the first 15 in breaststroke is going to be, like, do whatever you want, you know? We're going to have <laughs> running and diving starts in freestyle. It's not going to be that. You used to, used to stand still and dive from a block. You, you know what? <laughs> Actually, uh, in Budapest, they had new blocks that they oh. gonna. I don't know when they gonna introduce them, but they yeah, had the omegas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you could, on the sides, they they were like uh, handles. Yeah. Um. That was that was really and cool. There's a light as well, so you can actually see light, the light, which is nice too. So the reaction reaction times are probably gonna be way faster. Um. Right. Yeah, I have a question for you about about that. So you you are a seasoned, um, successful swimmer now, um, and there's so much gear out there. If you, what advice would you give to an athlete who's now coming? If they had to choose a pair of goggles, like why did you go with these guys? I'm not. I, I, why did you do the sponsor? What made you choose? Put it on. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> what advice? You just you look have? at them. I can't. There you go. <laughs> I love these freaking things. They're amazing. And I've worn goggles for 40 years. What advice do you have for choosing a sponsor, especially when it comes to goggles? Goggles can make or break a race. What advice do you well, have? I mean, you know, in 50 freestyle, every detail matters. And, and I mean, that's why I chose Magic 5, basically. Yeah. It's before I would I would get so frustrated with my vision like my eyes would hurt and and i would be so afraid that my goggles gonna leak and mm -hmm. and i'm gonna lose my race because i dove in and, and i can't see and when these guys um showed up like i was just amazed that you know they're custom made they're made for your face and they're so comfortable um the the way the company approaches like you know the whole process of making the goggles. Um, I'm 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 amazed. And when I'm you know when I was at words in Budapest in the call room and I was I had the goggles on, I was just I didn't even think that you know they're yeah. uncomfortable or they're gonna leak yeah. or you know something's mm -hmm. gonna happen. I was like, yeah, I have the best goggles and I'm gonna win. <laughs> It must be a USC thing because Dylan Carter also has this as well. And Dylan's from Trinidad. So maybe it's a Trinidad USC thing. Uh, I don't know. But I mean, we know what's the best. We know what's the best. <laughs> okay. For sure. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just amazed by the whole company, honestly. Yeah. It's it's not that only they, they sponsor me, uh, but but how they approach me as a as a human and me as a person that was mm -hmm. that was really important for me and uh mm -hmm. yeah they they really believed in my success they they believe that um the goggles are gonna help me but mm -hmm. but the main thing they they believe in my training and they like me as a person so um yeah i was i was really impressed that's important for selecting a sponsor i would say guys right yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, they haven't won a gold medal yet, so let's get a gold medal next year, right? Or let's, next let's two do years. it. Let's All do right. it. All right, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, before we let you go, Cassia, we got a few rapid fire questions. For sure. What's the hardest race in swimming? 50. <laughs> Olympic gold or world record? Olympic gold. Do you pee in the pool? No. No Europeans no. pee in the pool. Yeah. That's I'm leaving. That's you thing. What do you say? Excuse me. Know. I have to get out and pee. No, that's like a thing. And you take your suit off and it takes like 10 minutes. What? Yeah, we have bathroom breaks, like you know. <laughs> I, I, now we've got to ask a lot of Europeans about this because I did not know that. And I mean, come on, how could they not? European. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should Vegas have an ISL team? And if so, what would you call it? Uh, definitely yes. Um, I would. I would. Oh, oh, that's another fire question. That's hard. <laughs> um, I don't know. Something. We have Vegas Golden Knights. That can be it. 
uh, Golden Wolf. Golden go. Wolf. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. All right, we'll take it. Uh, another another Vegas area mascot, the Sandpipers of Nevada, have really made a name in distance swimming, but. Are you on a mission to flip the narrative that Vegas is a sprinting town? I think we do a great job sharing. Vegas is big. There's enough wood in the, you know. So yeah, it's 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 great that Vegas has both. Yeah. All right. So your husband's a poker player, right? Uh, um, what is he? He's he's a professional sports better. <laughs> Professional sports better. All right. So what have you what have you picked up from him in uh in betting that you've applied to swimming? Just stay calm and don't overthink. Just place the bets. <laughs> All right. Uh Dara Torres won a medal at 41. So how long are you going to keep swimming? As long as my body can do it. We'll wow. see. All right, let's go for 50. All right, let's do it. That's right. Okay, so how often, now that you get to listen to your body and you're speaking your mind and giving your opinion about your training, how often in your training do you do social kick? Pretty often. I like social kick. <laughs> so <Us too>. <laughs> <laughs> I really like social kicking with you. That's right. <laughs> On that note, uh, Cassia, good luck uh, at Europeans. What's next, uh, actually? Sorry, what's this next? Uh, week? Europeans, yeah. yeah. Okay. And how long do you have until then? Uh, five weeks. All right, cool. All right, well, the double taper uh, will commence. <laughs> That's uh, right. best, of, best of luck with that. We're really looking forward to watching you continue to chase the best times and get the most out of yourself uh, as you, you know, just float through the sport with uh, this great positive outlook. So thanks so much for hanging out with us. We really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. It Thank was you. a pleasure. That's it for this episode of Social Kick, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Hey, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you're enjoying Social Kick, tell your friends about it. And be sure to tell us what you liked by leaving a comment and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Social Kick. And you can find all of our content on our website,